Hey y'all and welcome back to the Mace Family Kitchen. I'm Tracy and today we are going to do some spaghetti sauce. However, we are going to take a little segment into saving some of your fresh herbs, vegetables, things that you would normally only be able to use within a week or so. So I actually took a few days off just recently. Um, wasn't in front of the video because I had to go shopping, had to get uh, normal food items. And one of the things that I greatly noticed is that I was unable to purchase many things. So I was driving all over our little town, all over the next little town. So I thought it would be a great time for us to catch up with some of those things that help you keep things intact, keep things available to you. One of my tricks is always to go in, if something's on sale, I buy a ton of it. Uh, Walmart. 88 cent spices all of y'all know me for the mason jars and my spices um, and that's why they have the 88 cents spices i can't keep them all in my cabinet so i transfer them to a mason jar and that makes it easy for me to use one of the things that i recently picked up of course for today's recipe was fresh parsley so i'm gonna set you down here to looking at this bowl now in a bowl of fresh parsley, you think, how am I supposed to save this? It goes bad. And usually fairly quickly, uh, fresh herbs are generally not that hardy. So I'm gonna add a little lemon juice to it. This is more of a me thing. You don't have to do it. Okay, I thought I was gonna add lemon juice to it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> All right, wow, okay. So there's not a measurement for this. This is, if you'd like a lot more lemon, put a lot more lemon in. Um, I use probably what amounts to about two tablespoons in this size bowl. And it's just because it gives such a rich flavor when I add it to other things or I'll have a little tanginess that I didn't have before. This is just avocado oil. You can use, uh, of course, olive oil or even coconut oil. So we're gonna just pour it around. Now, this comes out to about a cup of oil. Um, sometimes not that much, it depends really. This is two bunches of parsley. However, it was extremely big bunches, I, I could see how much was on the top and it looked huge. I thought it was actually more than one bunch. So you're not trying to make it swim. You don't wanna overindulge it in oil. You're just trying to get a good amount. So you take a ice tray, an ice tray, and you're gonna fill up the little compartments with it. Now this is something you can do with cilantro, you can do this with parsley, um, almost any of the items, uh, rosemary. Okay. So I'm going to take about a cup of this to add to my spaghetti sauce and of course, you know, make a mess. And the rest will be thrown in these trays to freeze. Once they have frozen, every time I need them, we're just gonna pop them out and allow us to throw them in from these little uh, ice cube trays to a bag. Then as soon as I get cooking something and I need this fresh parsley or I really want the fresh parsley because of the flavor, I pop them out of the ice cube trays. They're already in a bag. Throw them right into the uh, pot cooking vessel, however you wanna do. So the other one is stuff like onions, celery, bell peppers. So I have a little method that I use with these, which is that I take the cuts and I make a large dice, something like sweet and sour, 
for your bell peppers. So you have a large diced bell pepper. This is a, about a medium. I don't worry about mediums too often because I, you know, it's one of those things. I can use small, medium, celery, you know, sliced or diced, um, and of course, long slices. And the reason for doing that is it depends on what I'm making. If I'm making fajitas, I want to have long sliced vegetables. If I'm making spaghetti sauce, a small to medium dice is gonna work. So what you do is you just take these, put them on a parchment paper on top of a cookie sheet, freeze them, and then take them out and bag them. So we keep our vacuum sealer bag. That helps us put things away and keep it fresh longer. But you'll notice that it makes it so easy. You just come out into the kitchen, you say, oh, I'm gonna make some spaghetti sauce, open the bags, throw them in, you're not really, and of course you're cooking all this stuff, it's not like you're gonna eat it fresh. So in cooking it, you're never gonna have that, you know, oh, this got mushy or any of that stuff. You're simply transferring it from your freezer into your meal. So it'll save you a little bit of time and you'll definitely have the benefits of having more fresh vegetables longer. And anytime that I can do that, I love that. There are a couple things that you have to watch because they do take blanching. You know, uh, green beans, you're gonna wanna blanch them. Broccoli, cabbage, you have to do the blanch method first. With a lot of your basic ones like carrots, celery, bell pepper, this is just gonna be onto a parchment to freeze, put them in a bag. And the nice thing is, is that you've spread them out on the parchment so they're not gonna clump and get stuck together as bad. So then you don't have that big bulkiness that you stick into the uh, pot that you're cooking in, which is always nice. All right, so I took a moment to go ahead and finish filling the ice cube trays and putting them into the already packed freezer. This morning, I went ahead and browned four pounds of ground beef. Now. There are two places where I say ground beef hardly shows a lot of substance and spaghetti sauce and enchiladas, red enchiladas, that seems to be the case. It just never seems like you have enough meat in them. So I have this in a crock pot. It's my four pounds of beef, the parsley that we just did. So this is a cup of parsley. And I'm, I'm really just adding it because there's a unique flavor that bounces from uh, having the fresh parsley. So I didn't open cans today. Uh, normally I have them set aside ready for myself to dump in. But cooking is sort of a feeling. You know, when you look at something and you know it's covering and things are working out well, that's awesome. It's, it's sometimes not what's entirely possible at the time because sometimes I think, oh, I have enough. And then I look back and I say, no, I don't. Um, and that's, that's the real difficulty of doing video for all of this is that sometimes you're just not sure, especially in recipes that I've made a million times, and I think, oh, I've got this, easy. No, not always. So this was two 28 ounce cans of tomato sauce. These are petite diced tomatoes. But normally I prefer not to be opening cans uh, when I'm videotaping. This is just one of those places where it becomes harder and harder to not do that because I, I realize that, you know, I, I want to make it as perfect as possible for you to be able to put it together. So these are two 14 ounce cans of petite diced tomatoes. And <laughs> funny enough, Joe really hates tomatoes. I would normally use whole tomatoes in this, but the 
whole tomato thing is just a real hard issue for Joe. So that is perfectly fine if you love tomatoes. Add and add and add, you know, this is great. Um, a great way to add to your sauce. So today I, I was lucky enough to find when I was shopping a 14 ounce can of tomato paste instead of trying to utilize all the small ones. Okay, this can was a little bent. And this is beautiful because I have not, oh, I'm sorry, this is 18 ounces. Um, you can use, if you do not wish to have your sauce a little bit sweeter, it is more than okay to do the small cans, the four ounce, and use two of them. All right, y'all, so what we've come back to is the tomato sauce with the meat and the diced tomatoes and tomato paste. So while I was gone, I put another 28 ounce can of tomato sauce in here. It just looked like it was a little low for the meat that I have. I am going to add the 12 ounces, okay, the 12 ounce cans of canned mushrooms. You can use fresh if that is your choice. That is never a problem. So we have this in here. Now I'm going to add, this is about five to six stalks of celery, uh, depending if you can use all of the celery that's in there. We have not seen great celery this season. So this has some of the tops as well, um, all the ones that I could get. This is one very large onion. Oh, for me, I may have to transfer to two crock pots. Um, that is the problem with doing so much, but I freeze so much of this because it's so much easier to just take it out than it is to remake it all the time. So this is three bell peppers. And I'll, I'll say this, this is one of the recipes that I love that the, oh, hey, I'm gonna have to transfer to two. The recipe itself pretty much comes out the same way when you reheat it. That is not always the case. You know that not everything always tastes the same after you reheat it. This is one of those recipes where that actually does happen. Okay, so we're just gonna use four tablespoons of dried parsley. Now, if you remember, I said that dry and fresh have a different flavor. So we wanna just add a little of the dry. And of course, I'm just flowing over here. So that of course is going to mesh throughout both crock pots because I'll finish it out, try and get it a little mixed in and then add it to both crock pots. So the oregano, four tablespoons because this is amazing stuff in spaghetti sauce. And garlic powder, of course. You know my rule about doing the two and two, and I forgot the fresh garlic. So we're doing two tablespoons of the garlic powder, and we're gonna do four tablespoons of the garlic that's minced. I do not think I can get on a video and actually remember every single thing that I want. So we're doing two tablespoons of onion powder and one tablespoon of celery seed. So you don't wanna add salt in right away. Um, salt and pepper are one of those things 
that some people really have a craving for them. Some people do not. Um, it just really depends um, what people's preferences are. So I add a little bit, but I don't often add too much. So we're gonna go with two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar. So while it looks crazy because it's coming up out of the pot, this is a recipe that will take about six hours um, to just soak. And that's six to eight hours on low. Um, I have to watch with modern crock pots, it does tend to get hotter than normal. Um, this will be six to eight hours on low. About four hours, give or take, when your vegetables get soft on high. And once this is done, and you're ready to put it away, sticking it in freezer bags, perfectly fine. You're gonna pull it out, throw it in a pot, and cook it that way, or you're going to boil the bag of sauce in, uh, with the freezer bags, we can just put them in water, and it comes out exactly the same. It's never a disappointment to come back to this sauce, and it is one of the few things that I can say yeah, that, that's pretty much the same no matter how it goes. Ladies and gentlemen, I appreciate you spending your day with me. It is perfectly wonderful to spend the day cooking with you. We love you guys. God bless.